from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right, welcome everybody to the Morialli and Hitch podcast episode, whatever, can't remember, don't recall, but it is a beautiful day today. It's been mm-hmm. a What do you got, coffee? Got a coffee, but there's you only the Urban cat. Bowman. Urban the Bowman only, coffee. The only Thai cat is, it's half off and it's only one side. They only make it one side. This side didn't have it. And oh, I'm right-handed. You're right-handed. It doesn't make sense. No, no. They make, the, they make the coffee cups for the lefties. You know what else doesn't make sense? Butko has a nice shirt on. I said, where'd you get the shirt? Is that the new shirt? He said, no, look at Lovely shirt. Now we hear the echo. You can go on mute, Butko. Please. Let's not ruin everything. And now, then we said, Butko, it? when'd you get the shirt? He said, last year. I said, nice. I didn't get one of those. He said he paid for it. That's I don't embarrassing. Believe it. That's I don't embarrassing. believe it. I don't believe it. We're going to have to talk to uh, to, to Dave and uh, Peter and see if he really paid for that shirt. Yeah. I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. I haven't <laughs> paid for a thing there in 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep that trend going. Listen, yeah. we get what you pay for, buddy. Uh, yeah. Well, do we have to talk football? Because, oh, my God. I was on the standings this morning. And right now, Sask is coming over. Five wins. Like, they have that crossover tab, and you can see where they're two games it, up on. I can't even. No. It, I can't. You're fighting for second place. That's what's – that's – that's it's bottom line. I know there's lots of games left, but my gosh, they're fighting right now for second place. And we talked about the importance of these weeks, right? The, the East opponents, the back-to-backs, the all that stuff. And I'm not sure we did ourselves any favors. No. Well, you know what? The week before, I don't think we chatted because we didn't have it, and they came back and they and they beat, yes. they won, and that was a that was a, an awesome win and good fourth quarter win because I want to talk about that. The fourth quarter, Hamilton has not scored points in the fourth quarter until that game against Toronto, and they came back and I think they scored seventeen or fourteen in the fourth. That was which a was nice great. finish to that game. That was yeah. Good. They finished, and then <laughs> the Montreal yeah. game, they go down, <laughs> kick a few, well, it was great. They, they score. Montreal goes down like one play. They got the ball and boom, put it in the end zone. Kudos to Hamilton. Go back, kick a nice fifty-one yarder, forty-seven yarder, and then you know, you know, buddy, we've been in this situation oh, so many uh, times. Prevent? Thirty-eight, thirty-eight oh. seconds defense. Boom, boom, boom. Fifty-yard field goal. Game over. Oh. Just heart, heart, heartbreaking, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Frustrating. You know what? They had, they had some, they had some guys on D that were not there. Uh, you know, Simone. Um, I think roll a bunch of the guys, the starters who are yeah. good starters weren't there, but hey, they, they played them well. And, um, you know, they just, again, they didn't find that, that way to win. I got my neighbor, I can see my neighbor coming over right now with tomatoes. He's Italian. <laughs> Honest to God, he's got tomatoes and peppers. So he's going to knock on my door any second. <laughs> you're you're going to hear the dogs. If you got to go, you got to go get the tomatoes and peppers. You can't. As a matter of fact, I, I did a garden this year. Well, here we and, go. Oh, there's, there's the tomatoes. There's the yeah, peppers. There's the so my but, wife's going to get that. There you go. go ahead. Good, good. Oh, yeah, it's for your wife. She's, she's off. It's summertime. This is easy. Not for long. Not much longer. Not Three much weeks, longer. Get weeks. back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so let's talk about a little bit about your uh, championship weekend. We didn't get, really get a chat about that. So how'd it go? Incredible. Incredible. Uh, Ottawa was a great host. The games were fantastic. Um, you know, the the, play, the semifinal games were, were great. Um, the... You got a buzzer beater, well, buzzer we play with Elam ending, but last second winner uh, in the Ottawa game came to the championship game. And, you know, Hamilton Scarborough, which to me and you is Toronto Hamilton, right? The, ri- the yeah. QW rivalry. So that was cool because all these guys had played against each other, know each other from, you know, previous. So it was it was pretty electric. And what made it more electric is as I walked into the arena, there's Jermaine Cole, Jay Cole, yeah. sitting there. I'm like, what? Yeah. That was pretty, like, to come off a tour fly yourself yeah. into Ottawa to yeah. watch a CBL game is pretty, yeah. pretty cool. Pretty good, so yeah. Drake was supposed to be there too. Couldn't make it. He had a party at his house. He didn't like the result because Scarborough lost on the last play. Questionable foul call, right? Mm-hmm. After review. But <laughs> in my role as commissioner, I got to deal with the fallout of stuff like that. But anyways, it was an incredible finish. And then, uh, Drake was not too mad, or not too uh, happy, so he posted some uh, stuff. Picture of me, actually, to his 113 million followers, talking about <laughs> someone else. So I was like, to me, uh, all, 
any news is good news. So I'll sure you, sure you didn't use uh, your your name and my face or your yeah. face and my name. <laughs> so it was, it was awesome. We had great concerts. We had uh, lots of lots of sponsors. The games were like the game. The final game was incredible. They were down seventeen going into Elam, which is our target score. So we set the target score. I think at ninety one. They needed to score, you know, twenty six points to. They had to go on a twenty six and eight run, and they basically went on like a twenty five and eight run. Came within uh, two points, and then foul call, free throw, game over. But it was incredible. So, so for the twenty five listeners, I think we have. Oh, now, we have that now. You should. Nice. Yeah, I don't know, maybe more. But you should. You should let the let them know about that scoring and how that works. Because I'm not sure if, if people don't watch, they probably say, "What do you mean that?" That's scoring. Yeah. How does that? You don't just win a game. Like maybe explain that a little bit. So yeah, basically, if anybody has watched basketball and then the game is lopsided at the end within a couple of less couple of minutes, it just becomes a foul fest, right? The trailing team's got a foul because they need yep. the ball back. Foul, foul, foul. It's awful. It lasts thirty minutes. It, it's garbage time. Yeah. With the target score, what's called the Elam ending, which is the guy's name who created it. Basically, for us at the four minute mark or the first stoppage, the clock was off. Whatever the leading team has, so let's say they have 80 and the trailing team has 60, then we add 9 to the leading team score, so the target becomes 89. Now both teams raced at 89. So what happens is the trailing team can't foul because every time they foul, the team goes to the line, it gets closer and closer to that score because the the leading team has the advantage, right? Um, But if you play good defense and you take some shots and you work your offense, there's no clock to worry about. There's the 24-second the clock, but there's no game clock. So it allows for runs. And Scarborough went on this massive run, 17 points in a row, 17-0 run in, in Elam time. We're the only league in the world that does it, that uses it. And I imagine you will see it somewhere in the major leagues pretty soon. So the, the NBA has used how, it. How do the players like it? How, how, how do the players like it? You know, they, they like it because the intensity just cranks up because it's like next bucket wins, right? So the mentality is I, I'm just going to play backyard good basketball. It gets, it gets tough. Yeah. It's tough to yeah. officiate because it, it's high intensity, high contact. Like guys are going to the rim. Guys are playing defense. Like it, it amps it up. It is the best way to end a basketball game, period. But, yeah. you know, like anything, there's a lot of purists. It's going to take time for the major guys. But like I said, the NBA's already used it in uh, in their last three All-Star games to great success. So yeah. it's pretty, pretty incredible. Nice. I, I just like confused it. everybody. Hey, with that? Nobody has a clue. No, no. We have had some tremendous guests. Our listeners know who they've, who they've been. We've had a last week or two weeks ago, we didn't have a guest. The guy bailed on us. This week, new guest. We have no idea who it is. I don't think it's anybody on the West Coast because it's 10 in the morning and that would make it 7 a.m. They're not up. So, they're not up. They're not, there's no way they're up. So without further ado, Butko, would you please unveil the guest to uh, Rob and myself? Dun, 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 dun. I need glasses to Butko. see. Oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, no. I can feel his presence. Oh, my goodness. I, I can feel... I can just, it's coming. Wow. I, it's close. It's coming. It's and he's coming. <laughs> the internet in, the internet in Nova Scotia is oh, not very good. God. Here we go again. What? Oh, my. Well, full day. What? What? Oh, Jesus. Look at this man. What? What? What were you, Cocoon in that movie, Cocoon? What happened? What happened? Some You're of looking us, beautiful. You're some looking of beautiful. Us, you know, don't age as well as others. <laughs> Look um, at that handsome man. Beautiful. He's beautiful. Listen, it's uh, this this opportunity only comes up once in a lifetime. You know what I mean? Sit down, talk to you two about some of the nonsense that goes oh. on in your lives. Uh, so I'm just happy to be well, here, folks. Bef- before be- before we get into this, we haven't really said who our guest is, but our guest is no. Jeffrey Cummings. <laughs> oh, what a be- what defensive a- lineman for the Hamilton Tie Cats. Uh, unbelievable player! My oh, God, yeah. just just loved him. Oh my gosh, I still look, I still look love a smile on his face. Are you four forty right now? How much you weighing? <laughs> <laughs> what the just camera? Chance. The camera adds, you know, a hundred hundred twenty pounds. You know what I mean? How many cameras are pointing at you? Seven, seven, <laughs> seven. That's a, that joke that I said to my brother one time. He said, "Boy, I saw you on TV. 
says, you look like you put on a pounder. I said, well, the camera adds a few pounds. He says, you got seven cameras on you? What's going on? <laughs> Don't worry. From Las Vegas, he says this to me. Thanks yeah, a lot. Well, I... My gosh. Oh, listen. Yeah, there, Jeff, there might Jeff, be a pound or two since we played. There's a pound. Yeah. It's all good because yeah. you're a beautiful yeah. man. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I'm still in the best shape of my life. <laughs> still, still. So, hasn't changed, boys. Hasn't. I changed. love it. Oh, and that's what we love. That's yeah. what we love. So, a little little history on Jeff Cummins. I played with Jeff in Toronto yeah. in my first uh, year or two. I had a, just a, a crazy time. Those times in Toronto were nuts. They were not. They were far from normal. <laughs> to the first year, especially. Yeah. But you yeah. came there. From, I want to say Memphis, Oregon. Where, where did you come Oregon. from? What? No, no, no. Did, didn't you play in the in the American teams? Which what, what team was it? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Vegas. Vegas. Where did you go to school? Yeah. How was that? Where did you go to school? Yeah. Oregon. Yeah, thank you. Thank Oregon. You. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I'm talking about professionally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, yeah. When the teams were whatever disbanding, you came from. What was Vegas like to be a C? You've never played in the CFL. Make sure you know there's a team in Vegas. Yeah. You go there and you're like, what What do you think at that yeah. point? Well, it's a, it's a, the odyssey, right? I mean, uh, prior to that, right? So Robbie was right. I played at Oregon and then uh, was picked up with the Rams as a free agent. So then I had gone to L.A., back home, thought I was going to make it. Never been cut from anything in my life, right? Not the beautiful subject that I am now. I used to be in much better shape. So I could run around and do stuff, but never been cut before in my life. So then got cut and, and thought the world was over, yep. right? So got cut. Oh, yeah. Signed with another couple of C- or NFL teams. Ended up going to camp in 94 with Browns. Got cut from there. Belichick was the head coach at the time with a big, real good staff. Saban was a deep coordinator, and I could name wow. drop a few more. But anyways, there was – guys are so got cut from You're there. You're pulling a Bernsey. Yeah. You're pulling a yeah. Bernsey. Yeah, good call. <laughs> oh, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Bernsey. That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, I go to Toronto, but uh, we uh, we folded up. Vegas was there. I only played nine games. And, Alvia uh, was there, correct, with you? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Anthony Anthony was there. There was a handful of really good players there with us. Uh, Tameric Vanover was our return oh, yeah. specialist. And, I mean, we were good. Reinbold was our special teams coordinator. Oh, uh, we were solid, man. We were really, really good on specials. We weren't very good on offense and defensively. You know, we struggled. We had some good players, but we just couldn't figure it out. And like, to your point, I mean, it was in Vegas, right? So I lived yeah. in an apartment with a buddy of mine and my brothers that was going to UNLV. I paid $110 a month to live in an apartment with four other guys, five other guys. Wow. So there were six of us there. I shared oh a room God. with one of my buddies and, uh, you know, we we you know one of us sleep in there they don't sleep on the couch or whatever but i was only there for half the season because i was in cleveland up until yep. training camp finished so we got done with training camp and we're about ready to start the the regular season got cut so now i'm trying to figure out okay do i want to do this again and try to do the nfl thing and continue to keep fighting or do i want to you know try to make some money anyways go to vegas and play and oh what a gong show uh, oh my, God. my first three years were gong shows until i oh, yeah. teamed up with we got in, back into hamilton and we actually got, you know, solidified, but gong show, uh, Vegas, you, you know, we, we could, we picked up our checks in the actual casino cashiers. <laughs> so we had to go into a casino to the cashier desk and they handed us our checks. And then oh you get this God. check and you're like, huh, well, <laughs> I got my rent, I got my rent covered. <laughs> well, yeah, there's be a, yeah, I didn't have to worry about that. I had, a uh, you know, there were many times where guys would not ever get out of the casino oh, with their actual no game checks, no. you know. I would have been there was a, a couple disaster. times. Yeah, you two would have been in trouble. Oh, so there's no disaster. Yeah, disaster. Uh, no, but there no. was a couple times where guys would walk out with their game check and have two or three times their game check. Yep. Right. Yep. Now that only happened a couple of times. But, How about they? And I didn't. But you, I wasn't were you got getting paid in U.S. or were you getting? We were, were right. We so were, if the if yeah. the minimums here were twenty nine, probably thirty, you know, maybe twenty nine, twenty nine five, you were they making. Were you weren't making very much either. No. <laughs> and I only and I was only there for half the season. That's right. right. So yeah. there's a whole lot of more stories we'll talk about on the, you know, when we're not on oh, this. You but can. Just, <laughs> and, and and from a financial side of it too, like that stuff, like just yeah. ridiculous. Like, ridiculous the whole thing. So anyway, sinking ship as it goes. The the two two good quick stories on it. We have we go to BC to play. 
and our our uh, equipment manager and one of the players get into a fight, a full on fight. The equipment manager before the game ever starts quits right there. So we have to go through the rest of the game, the pregame, all the rest of it, with no equipment guy, no nothing. No one's handing anything out. We have no idea what's going on. Guy left. So we're trying to figure things out. We don't have socks. We don't have, like, nothing, right? So that was one story. Uh, Another story, we go to Saskatchewan to play. My first sack in the CFL was this game. We go there. It's cold. We have zero cold weather. 25 of us head down to the Army Surplus store. And we're no. buying long johns and doing all, just try to make sure that we stay warm. Yeah. Uh, and that was the first time I'd ever seen someone kick a field goal punt because the wind was so bad. So uh, Carlos, oh, Huerta, right. Carlos Huerta had 13 missed field goals in that game because You're just kidding. Kicked, we just kicked it out of bounds. So instead of punting, we lined up in field goal formation yes. and we just hammered it out of bounds. And cornered it. Tell, That's right. As much as he could. Tell, tell right? the, and there was no flag then, right? So tell, we just kick it out of bounds. Tell the guys in your office to beat it. Can you guys hear them? With oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, so Dan Mc, it's Dan McNally. So you, oh, you tell Mr. McNally. Oh, that's yeah. the problem. Rob Hitchcock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Says, hey. Rob Hitchcock yeah. and Mike Morreale say, hey, coach, can you keep it down, please? So, yeah, it is a professional show. It is a professional. Show. Well, uh, let's go. When they told me it was when they told me it was you two, I said, "Well, let's let's be honest." You, you uh, were a bit nervous, and you're yeah. probably still a bit nervous. We'll, we'll, we'll not, be a, gentle. not a chance, not a chance, no. not a chance. <laughs> so, anyways, the quick, quick, dirty version of the first three years, Mike, as you said, and we went to Toronto. So, so, anyways, the last story is probably the best one. So we're folding, like we know we're folding. Yep. We can't get anybody to come out to see us play. So the last regular season game we're supposed to have home in Vegas, we go on the road and played in Edmonton. Oof. And it as was a home cold, game. As a home game. And it was cold and wet and icy and all the rest of that stuff. Oof. And don't I, you know, tear my MCL. I had a no. plane ticket. I had a plane ticket in my house, in my apartment. And you guys remember the name Marcelo Simmons. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I was supposed to go and try out with the Jacksonville Jaguars a week later, had the plane ticket in my hand, literally. And I tore my MCL and had to send the plane ticket back. You know who signs the Jacksonville Jaguars? Marcelo Simmons. Was Same it? thing. Yeah. He, he was no there. Way. We've had this conversation. He was there. We would have got to know each other then. Anyways, we met a year later, obviously. And when we were all in Toronto, Mike, yeah. so uh, yeah, bye. my first, my first year was Vegas. They folded. I go to Toronto. You and I were there. Two coaches, we can oh. get it go on for hours about what happened. Hours. In that one. Yeah. Then you guys bring in all the studs for '97 with Flutie and all the rest yep. of the Memphis Mad Dog defense and all that stuff. Heck, they trade me in training camp. Say, yeah, good luck, fat guy. You go to Ottawa, <laughs> right? That's right. We, we fold there. I get two more coaches there. So my first two and a half seasons, I had five coaches, five head coaches. I had to forfeit my I had to forfeit my uh, my pension in Ottawa so we could make payroll. Oh my god! In Vegas, they gave us our pension because they didn't want to transfer it over from Vegas yep. into the CFL. So I have six years in the CFL, but only four years of pension because of the situations that I was in. And in the first three years, had five different head coaches wow. and won six six games. Four, three. Sorry, eight games. Wow. Won Whoa. eight football games in two and a half years with five head coaches. That's uh and, and then and I teamed is... up with you two idiots, and then it was oh, just, and then, then, went then south magic from there. Happened. You know it mean? went totally yeah. downhill. Yeah, downhill. Downhill. you thought downhill. that was bad. Just just what happened after. Yeah, yeah. For yeah, those yeah. Uh... I mean it went like this. It went downhill and uphill at the <laughs> yeah, same you time. Bet. You know what I mean? Yeah, but for you know for, for those who are just tuning in and listening to this, we have oh. uh, Jeff Cummins on the uh, on our podcast, one of a very special man, one unbelievable football player. Um a great friend of ours. Uh, and now we, we have no idea what your stats are, right? No, no idea. We have no idea. Your stats. I don't care. We don't, we don't, we don't do <laughs> stats on this one. We don't care. We're just good football, good people. And you know what, Jeff, good you've people. been up at Acadia university in Wolfville, Nova Scotia for what, 20 years now. How many years you've been up That's there? Crazy. 2001 was my first year as an wow. assistant. And, you took uh, over from Sunny yeah. Wolf. No. In 03. 03. Yeah, I did in 03. Cause my brother, Paul, yeah. as you know, went to Acadia and Paul, Paul, Paul and I talked, a while yep. ago. we just talked about a month and a half. Yeah, ago, and yeah, uh, and he went there with, of course, the uh, horse with uh, Morielli's cousin, uh, my, uh, Paul Masati. With Paul, no, so, uh, Paul that was great stories. I was talking to a couple guys. I was talking to a couple guys yesterday, literally yesterday, that played with Paul and 
played with both, both, both Pauls. Pauls. Yeah. yeah, both Pauls. And they were talking about him. And I said, I was coming to do your guys' show. And they said, oh, you got to be kidding me. Those guys are doing a show. Yeah, yeah. Well, I played with Paul. And we played with Mossadi. And, da, da, da. and we just started going on about all this. I said, listen, That's great gross. guys. Both are phenomenal golfers. Yeah, football players, but great golf. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Who are you not so, talking about? And then I talked about you two. And then I said, wait a minute, the golf sessions with those two, I can't remember how we finished, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. <laughs> we, we, but that goes back to a comment you guys made. Sorry, Robbie, I don't oh, want to put you no. off. The comment you made about you don't know any of my stats or you don't know any of the stats or whatever. Not important. If you go back to when we played, and this is we'll start talking glory days, no one gave a no. shit what our stats no. were. I didn't care how many catches you had. I didn't care no. how many plays Rob made. You didn't care how many plays I made. And I didn't care what anybody did, but we freaking won. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah, we, we had fun doing yes, it. We we, oh, my gosh. More fun <laughs> than I can imagine, right? So it was one of those things that, you know, playing the games was as much fun um, as anything and hanging out with the crew that we had there of 30 to 40 guys. It wasn't like – clicks of like six or seven guys or eight or nine guys and mike you and i could talk about that when we were in toronto how that kind of yeah, clicked oh, in yeah. different groups and whatnot and rob i'm sure you can you know talk about some of those things in your experiences prior to yeah. the years that we were all together when we would go i tell people this all the time we get done with practice we go in the back parking lot there there would yeah. be 40 of us all hanging out cracking a beer just talking yeah. And just, yep. out. and I've never experienced that anywhere that I've been NFL, CFL, arena league, what never, never had an experience. We've, like uh, we've, so. we've talked about this a couple of times with, uh, you know, we've had, you know, Dave hack, we've had Montfort, we've had Flutie. Um, we've had belly. We've had like Marwan Hage. We had all the guys on and the guys that played in our era that comes to, to mind all the time. And guys, people like, I don't think they can understand the, the camaraderie, the family, the love that we had for each other. When, like you said, when we used to go into Brian Timmons stadium after a practice, after a rundown and get the rookies to get us two, three cases of beer, we sit there and just have one or two beers and just talk. And we'd sit there for an hour and a half and, and not go home. Yeah. Most guys would be. No, most right. Oh, Andrew would sit there six, seven, eight hours. And, and not go home. <laughs> I thought Andrew lived at Ivory. Well, yeah. I, I wasn't sure. He, he, he did with uh, with Pusky and the rest of the guys. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's right. And Bugs oh. and the rest. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, I, listen, we're we're here with Jeffrey Cummins. I, I, we have to do this. Say this is what we're told. We have to remind people yeah. because you know, just in case one of our sixteen viewers goes to the bathroom, comes back, want to make sure they know who we're talking to. <laughs> as you nice. know, that's nice. So we're we're here with we're here with Jeff Cummins. Jeff, you you came out of Oregon. Yeah. Bounced around the CFL, found a home, really a home in Hamilton. We all did. We yep. all found a home in Hamilton. Fair. Like that Absolutely. was our home. Absolutely. But you were a character. Yes. Well done. You were a character from day yeah. one. Where did you now? People don't know when Jeff would, Jeff had one of the best spin moves I've ever yeah. seen. Number one. <laughs> and it was all momentum. Once the boiler got going in one direction, it was just <laughs> centrifugal force just spun him around the other way. And then you do your little toe tap dance. Right. And where did that come from? Was that an Oregon thing? Was that you just having fun? No, no. So and and the centrifugal force, as you guys remember, walking around in the locker room, it wasn't my belly so much. But anyways, that's another conversation. <laughs> so uh, it's one of those things where uh, the dance was a little bit of a, a, a take. And I, I actually talked to Suter about it when they were here and did a game here at Acadia, uh, you know, a month or yeah. so ago. The, oh, yeah. The touchdown Atlantic which was phenomenal, by the way. We can get into that a little bit later if you want. Um, but he and I were talking. So in 95, he sat down with me in some hotel, you know, gym, like workout gym. We talked about it. And he asked me the question because we were doing a halftime interview. So he, you know, he talked to me about it. But what it came from was um, in 95, uh, in that offseason, there was two separate guys from my junior college team. My junior college team, I don't know if I talked to you guys about it. I'm sure I mentioned it at one time or another. We were incredible. I was there for three right. years. I missed the first year because I broke my foot. And then I played the next two years. In the three years that I was there, we lost two games in three wow. years. So we played for two national championships, one, one, lost one. And the other one, we played in a bowl game when we won. And, uh, yeah, I was player of the game. I got a pick, believe it or not. Come on. Tackled at, the, tackled at the inch line. <laughs> anyways, so the guy runs it in and gets his fourth touchdown on the day, the bugger. But, anyways, uh, <laughs> but, but I had two guys that summer – or, or that off season before I went back to play that passed away. Okay. And one of them, one of them was in a uh, traffic stop. He did something that he shouldn't have done, reached in for some stuff or whatever and got shot. Right. And then uh -huh. another guy got killed in a, in a gang thing. Oh, so I had two guys on the show anyways, 
the dance was something that another guy on our team used to do, and we used to all do it, and he would kind of just get all up, and he kind of tiptoe around yeah. or whatever. And so I was like, oh, man, you know what? I got to do something that is going to kind of pay tribute to those guys. Right. Now, some of the nonsense that went on when I was dancing, I just saw it when we played that game. Some of them I was like, wow, I don't – that wasn't what it was supposed to be. Like, I don't know <laughs> what happened there. Yeah, all, I mean, it just went, right? So and then Glenn asked me to, hey, so how where did that come? I I don't know. I'm not sure. Adrenaline. You said it started going, Adrenaline. and then oh god, what happens? But it was just one of those things where um, I started it with the intent that it was going to be something that he did, and then it kind of took off a little bit, and then I started getting some notoriety, and people were like, oh, the sack dance, the sack dance. I'm like, oh, this is I'm creating a name for myself here That's on a right. team on a team, Mike. As you remember, we were god awful. Oh, oh, we were bad. We horrible bad. you're talking horrible. toronto here right you're talking toronto correct oh, yeah. 1995 <laughs> toronto 95 <laughs> toronto bad. let's yeah. clarify with the, with the hey mike with the jersey that had the argo that was oh, half awful. tucked into our pants you know what i mean <laughs> so yeah anyways it was um you know it was a fun thing for me to do and if i got lucky enough to get a sack you know i did it and i had i don't know seven or eight or nine of them yeah. that year and then that was when they they you know if you got a strip sack didn't count as a sack. It was a oh, it was a yes. fumble, right? Yeah. So the big joke with defensive line was get the strip sack and then push the ball back underneath them. So you got your your bonuses for a sack, right? <laughs> Let me get that two hundred dollars for the sack. No, you can keep the ball. Just give me my two hundred bucks, right? Oh, so, I love it. Uh, but anyways, the the dance itself kind of started with that, and um, and then it just kind of took off, and and people kind of would mention it and bring it up, and so then I said, well, let me just keep going with it. As we got into the years in Hamilton, it just kind of I don't know. I just started acting up more and more. And the fans yeah. were fun. Like, it was fun, right? The fans would cheer and scream, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah. And then my, mine wasn't as subdued as Joseph. Joseph would give him the year out kind of thing. <laughs> me, I'm out there because I didn't get married, many of them. So I was like, yeah, let me go crazy here for a second. So, And I was fortunate enough. Let's be real honest here. And, and Joseph and I are still – well, I haven't talked to him in a while, but we were real close, as you guys know. You know, oh, yeah. You know, I was afforded sacks and luxury because they had to watch out for him, right? Joseph was a – a man amongst boys and uh, Rob would be in the meetings. We'd be sitting there. Right. And, and Rob and I sat next to each other yeah. as he was pulling the plug on Sudsy and turn the lights <laughs> off and all the things. He could do out the back oh door. my gosh. Oh. Whatever he could do to tease Sudsy, whatever he could do. But then, you know, we'd have a play or something and Joe would peep pipe in because Sudsy and, and Deke would be like, Commons, what are you doing on this play? And I'm like, and Joe would say, Coach, that's my bad. My bad. I told him I might go inside or I might go outside. And I look at Joe and I'm like, Are you going to help me out? He's like, Yeah, yeah, I got that. That's on me. Coach. That's on me. Like, Thank you. Because yeah. we'd line you. up and he'd give me the old wink. And I'm like, Oh, well, now I got to wait to see what Joe does. And then I'll react yeah. off of him. More often than not, it worked out really, really well because he was really, really good. You know, and then there were times where they'd force him out and I'd get a cheap sack and you know, all because they were they were all just just on just grab the center and the guard and let Joe do the nice little a gap. Yeah, little a -gap. yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez, I remember geez, when I that. I remember when I had us. Remember the old storm. Remember the blitz yeah. storm. And I think you were yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was. It was one of the games we were up a lot, and Sudsy called this storm blitz, and I came flying up. And I think you grabbed them, and you just let the center go, and then he stepped back into the and it was one of these boom, and I was like. I was not ready for that hit. I, I, I saw this beautiful hole open up and then you let him go. And I'm like, I think you did that on purpose. It was awesome. Well, it was awesome. you cheated on Friday the wow. day before in the golf tournament. You, you did not let me win. You cheated. The foot wedge came out. I'm like, listen, we, you got to pay for okay, that. If, if I can remember this correctly in the Shadok tournament that we played in, then in, and then you're going to remember this because you're the one who pulled out. I don't want to remember He's the this. one, him and Coulter are the ones that pulled out a sapling tree about 25 feet and they dragged it in the, in the in a golf cart for about 500 yards. Just the, wanted to replant they it, it. But they, they were just replanting. They brought it right up to the clubhouse. They dragged right it to the right up to the clubhouse. Right to the right clubhouse. To the club, and then yeah, that's a left fact. it on the 18th hole. It's like, that's a 20-foot tree they pulled out of the ground. Oh, <laughs> I, I, good I, old days. That I try to block out. I do remember it, Rob, but I try to block that It was Coulter. Out. And I do remember it was that. Cool. Yeah, we're playing Jeff, that on cooler. That that's cooler oh, all day. Yeah. That's cooler Jeff, all day. there's a lot of things I try and block out. <laughs> oh, buddy. Don't oh, worry. It's a, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things, honestly, that, uh, you know, those those tournaments, that Shadok thing. We, we used to do Ryder the Ryder Cup. Cup. Yeah, yeah, we used to do the 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 Hamilton Tiger Cat Ryder Cup. And so it would be Americans versus Canadians. And 
we I don't know if we ever really figured out who won. It didn't matter. We didn't, we didn't Did it care. Matter? Did it matter? No, no, because Cooler yeah. would come and never play golf. No, but his whole cart would be full with a keg and two six, yeah, twenty six. But Cooler was and, Cooler was the manager for the U.S. team. He didn't want to be on the kid. Yeah, he was. No, he, no. he wanted you guys. <laughs> Well, he was hanging out with pork chop and burnt. Oh, and of course. Feed. That's why. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, oh. it was one of those things that didn't have anything to do with me. So, so on a, on a, but oh. I had fun. Now I got to tag along and play in those tournaments. And awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I, we played more golf in those couple of years oh, yeah. than uh, yeah. you know than I have since. And I wish Free I could golf. get back to playing that. Yeah, Free that's golf. true too. The best kind yeah. of golf. That's the true too. Yes, golf. that's true too. We we had some good time. Those were those are fun. Going to play golf with you guys and and hanging out with the group and um i think it just it, the thing that it did is solidified those relationships that we all had i mean even yeah. to this day you know i'll see danny i went out and guest coach with the with the bombers this year yeah. so i hung out with danny and we'd sit and talk and there were stories that were coming up from the golf tournaments and different things oh, yeah. we didn't talk about the game we didn't talk about the games no. like we didn't talk about it we talked about the 5 30 in the morning when we were getting ready to get back on the plane for winnipeg that we hadn't slept all night and i'm trying to get a half hour sleep and he's bouncing <laughs> on the bed pouring frosted flakes all over me like i, I what do you do like and out danny five minutes dude five minutes pouring them in and then the what was left cooler was in the shower he pours them in the shower on cooler so you know it's just one of those for things. no reason no for no why reason. why just uh why wouldn't you so we start talking about that we didn't talk about the fact that he threw eight million touchdowns Not. or you know that he might be one of the best quarterbacks to play in yep. the cfl and we didn't there's none of that conversation comes up it comes up with um, you know, the, the times that we had going to highs steakhouse yep. or yep. going to the wheel or going to, you know, whatever we did, going to play golf, like you said, a Shadok or whatever. I, I mean, those or are the, the Palomino things that club. I remember. Or the Palomino Club. <laughs> we might have gone there once or twice. We might have gone there once or twice. Oh. Once or twice. Oh. So how – Well, we're, we're here. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, Rob, I want to get into – we're here with Jeff Cummins, longtime CFL, longtime Thai cat. Defensive lineman, great guy. Now the head coach at Acadia. How would you get to Acadia? And yeah. by the way, Sonny, you brought up Sonny Wolf. Sonny Wolf recruited me you when told I was me here this. at Matt. You told me this. And yeah. uh, how's Sonny doing? Because I haven't spoke to him forever. So Sonny's in in Montreal. He and his wife are in Montreal. He was coaching high school football for a long period of time. Really? After he left here, so he left here and had a couple different stops. That he went to, crazy as it says. The year that he got fired, he turned and went and coached at X with Deeker. Yep. So he oh, was an no offensive way. coordinator with Deke, okay? And then he left there, and he was at the University of Montreal, and then he was helping out. Uh, he was at McGill. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then he started doing high school in Montreal. And so he's still in Montreal. He does some freelance writing for Canada yeah. Football Chat. Or, uh, yeah, Canada Football Chat. I think that's it. With uh, Lee Barrett's thing that he has. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he does some freelance writing. for, And Lee Barrett played here at Acadia as well with Larry Justanis, who you guys both know, and – you know, that whole group of guys there that do the football north stuff and the prep school stuff and all that stuff. So, you so, to, still so I got to stop you for one second, Jeff. The yeah, beauty no of talking to Jeff is you ask tell one one question and you'll get an answer about a hundred things, which is perfect. Because sometimes you guys in the podcast they have nothing to say. So. <laughs> How does it go, Rob? Uh, cheeseburger. He's driving the cheeseburger. Bus. Cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so no, so Sonny, you, no, so Sonny, yeah. Sonny's there. Um, the, the answer for me being out here is going to be short and quick, and you guys both know the reason. You just don't know you know the reason. Um, Your wife. But Sonny's in, wife. Sonny's in Montreal. Yes. Sonny's in Montreal, and he's uh, he's living there with his wife. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think I think they're doing fine. He was here at a dinner a couple of years ago. I saw him. Actually, we had a big dinner here, and all the coaches, and you would know all, all three of them, John Heward, um, no, Bob, like Vespaz, Bob Vespasian, yeah, Vespasian yeah. and uh, and then Sonny, and then myself. So those are the last. That's only four. Wow. Oh, the- there's there is one other one or two other ones earlier, but they were like sixties. Wow. So wow. Those four coaches since Vest took over. What was Vest's first year, Dan? 70, 71. Wow. So from seventy one till now, there's only been four head coaches at a cave. You're lucky man. Wow. You're lucky man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's the long answer to where's Sonny. But those coaches, you guys know, John Hewer, <laughs> yeah. you yep. guys know you would have played against him, you know, when he was yep. coaching at Toronto a little bit. And then Vess was all over the place. And what a great yep. man. God rest his yeah, soul. Yeah, I mean, man. he passed away here a couple of years ago and we miss him. But he would come up here and he guest coached with us one time. And uh, he and Sonny coached together. And then 
there's a there's a connection as you guys know the connection of football the networking is so, hey. oh, God, so yeah. tight. we're uh so we're ready if you're training camp soon we could come up and guest coach for a couple of days i've never been to acadia my brother went there as you know, and i would love i've never been to the end and is it the anvil and the axe still going that Yes, look at you. So, of course, you know where the bars are. Yeah, yeah, so I've never been. I've heard, I've, I've, there. I've heard about them, but I've never been. Yes, yes. Well, you, need, well, you need to get us up there. Well, let me just tell you right now, we've already started training camp. We're a week in. Our first regular <laughs> season game is Saturday. Oh, so well, we'll see you I'm next in the year. Middle, we'll show up on the see weekend. you next year. I did this. Sh- yeah, I did this show right in the middle of my training camp. So you're welcome. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. As you can tell, I'm really stressed out. Here. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. So I got oh. you know what I mean. So nothing's changed, boys. I love nothing's it. changed. I love it. So yeah. So Sunny, Sunny uh, is doing well. And then the reason why I'm here, and Robbie alluded to it, is uh, my wife Karen. So Karen yeah, is from sweetheart. this part of the part of this country. Um, she's from this area, 20 minutes, 25 minutes yep. from here, was where she grew up, spent most of her life here. Her mother's still here. Her father passed away a few years ago. Her sister and a couple of nieces are close. And uh, yeah. So how old that's, are the kids? Brought us here. How old are the kids? My son is 20 and my daughter is 18, uh, wow. both going into second year university. My son took the COVID year off, didn't go to school, stayed here and worked, and then was out at UBC last year and now is transferring to Always the other coast. Yeah, wow. well, he's transferring to York. He's transferring to York because he got into film movies production stuff. So he's going to go do that. Doesn't he, get, yeah, doesn't, my he, daughter's doesn't he get a free education if he goes to Acadia? Yep. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> You've had that conversation before, haven't you? Yeah, bring that bring that up again, Rob. Please, please bring that up again. Yeah, I love it. No film, movies, and production at Acadia. Oh, that's you know true. what I mean? That's so, true. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And my daughter's fair doing enough. nursing, nursing at UPEI, and we don't have a nursing program either. Uh, huh. Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. There you go. That investing wow. I did with that investing I did with Ozzy twenty some years ago is really paying off. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that work out? Mine too. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, you too. Yeah. <laughs> Any way I could take a shot at Oz when he's not here is good. Oh, I got a picture. Hey, I was out in Kamloops, speaking of Ozzy, I was out in Kamloops scouting uh, God, last year. And I was looking at it. I was watching a junior football game. And I go into this hallway. And isn't there a shrine to Ozzy? Oh, boy. No. I'm not even kidding. For I got junior picture. football. Yeah. Junior. I'll, send you guys, I'll send you guys a picture of it so you guys can have it. There's like the shrine. He's got his yeah, cleats. He's got a jersey. Yeah, he's got a picture of him, the whole thing. It's awesome. I was like, man, I got to figure out how to get in touch. So I got to send him this stuff. Like, Ozzy, you are in the Hall of Fame. What the hell? You know, like, anyways, it was great. But uh, yeah, I don't even know where we were going with that. So yeah, Karen's out here. The kids are there. Sid's playing basketball. My daughter, Sydney, is playing basketball nice. as well, Michael, which I know the basketball guy that you are nowadays. Okay. I remember the jump shot, the fadeaway jumper. I remember when we played cops okay. and cats. I remember. Hey, down buddy. low, I was. I, I could sharpen the Mix elbows down low. Eh? I Mix like that. It up. Mix it I up. Like you that. notice Rob's not saying a word. Right? Not a word. Not a word. He not was word. waiting for the well, hockey. You were tapes. a baller. Hockey. Yeah. You were a baller. Yeah. You were a baller. Yeah. yeah, you were yeah. A baller. Uh, yeah anyways, anyways. Anyways. That was so your I, favorite sport. Let me guess. Is that your favorite? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Wasn't even close. You were very light on your feet. Very light on your feet. He was. You were. Uh, at least on the feet. At least on the, everywhere else. The scale, not so much, but the feet, not yes, so yes, yes. No, I, I coached. So I coached uh, my kids in, in junior high, and then I coached my daughter's high school basketball team for uh, three years as well. I just, and they were good. We played provincially and lost in a provincial championship. And, yeah, we had some good good groups, girls that have gone on. Eight or nine girls from those three years have gone on to university to play basketball, too. So I'm proud of that, too. It's, good, it's a That's good group awesome. of kids. It's been fun. Awesome, buddy. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. How about you guys? Now, Michael, we'll, we'll, no wait, on, we'll wait on your conversation, Mike, because this will take a long time to talk about what's been going on in your personal relationships. Robert, we don't. How's, how is your wife? Very well, well. Yeah, we don't have enough time for Mike to talk because he, he likes no, to take that. So no, we're not going to no, do it. We don't. But Michelle, Michelle is doing great. She's teaching uh, grade four or five split. She's been like 17, 18 years, 19 years teaching. Uh, my daughter, Ava, is 18, just turned 18, going to Brock. Um, and close to home. Yeah, close to home. I told her to get out of here and go somewhere far, but she's like, no, I want to stay home because she wants a car. So that's a good thing. So, yeah. yeah. And son Matthew's going to be 16 in September. Uh, he's like a wow. four handicap golfer. He's ridiculously good. And uh, he's going into grade 11, playing double A hockey, soccer, no football yet. He's, he's, he's starting to grow now. He, I think he, because of COVID, we didn't really have football has yeah. been kind of, yeah. kind of, oh, I know. I just said to him, I, I said to him, I just need you to, you know, you've been on soccer and hockey teams when you have 18, 20 guys on a, you need to get into a group setting and a team setting when you have 40, 50, 60 guys and learn different cultures and just learn how yeah, different yeah. people, 
you react and see how they, you know, see how they are. And I, I love that about what we did. And I'm so happy that, you know, we had an opportunity to do that, but with Matt, I'm, I'm hoping he's going to try it just to, cause he's a tough kid. He's a tough kid. And yeah. I just, I would love him. Not, I don't care about following footsteps. I, don't, I really don't care about that. I just want him to play the game just to feel that. And, and to, you know, to learn those life life skills, but other than that, buddy, just working away still. Um, yeah. I got a home office here and go back again, go back in working away. Yeah. Work. So yeah, it's just a- what is it <laughs> that you do? Cause this is the story. When I talk to anybody in Hamilton, nobody knows history that uh, like Rob, Rob's kind of like, you know, what was the TV show where no one could figure out what the guy did? For a living? Was that? <laughs> my wife, was that Kramer? Was that Kramer on science? Like, like, what is it, it that you do? My, when my, George Costanz used to go to work with the uh, briefcase yeah. with crackers, crackers in it. That's yeah. what Rob does. It's a, uh, yeah. you know what? My wife still doesn't really know what I do. <laughs> he doesn't she sees, sees this big screen in here what are you doing um i real quick i worked for a, a a private equity firm a private read out of out of burlington for a bunch of years helped them grow that and then left and joined the company that i started with back in 07 uh called walton and i'm back with them for the last year and they're of course they're a land-based uh development uh, asset management company so i've been with them for the last year and helping build a, a product down in, in canada again so um, Sweet. yeah. So head office is Arizona, which is great, which, uh, get the head down there tough a couple of times, but yeah, it's good. It's and I'm, tough life. Yeah. We're not going to ask Mike. Look good. Ask Mike. Oh, so here's the thing with Michael and he'll tell yeah, you, here. we just talked recently. He, yeah. We talked about a month and a half ago. So we got a yeah. chance to chat and catch up and I got, I got some, I saw the gray, by the yeah, way, I don't, that I, mine's gray too, but you just can't find it except here. You know what I mean? Jeff, so, I just sent you an email. I don't know if you got it with two numbers that I have. So is this, I don't, okay, whatever. You don't, you don't check. Yeah, yeah. You got a flip phone still. So <laughs> I hold on, I'll find one in my desk, but no, I have a, I have a good dude. I have to recruit. Oh, That's there you go. Nice. This is, this true. is uh, the, the, you have to, yeah. you don't have a choice. The lifeblood. Yeah. Life yeah. Blood. So no, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that Robbie. I mean, it's uh, I know the feeling when you talk about your kids following your footsteps. So my son is taller than I am. Oof. Uh, but he's thin, right? He's thin, like I used to be. And uh, before and we met, before we yeah, that's right. Yeah. Long before I got to YouTube. <laughs> so, but he's uh, he was a basketball player and he played a little bit of football. But to your point, playing on the football team and being in a situation where he loved it, yeah. you know, he loved playing it, skinny as a rake, and and played defensive end and um, you know had fun with it and enjoyed it. But he's got so much more creative juices than I ever ever had. Awesome. Uh, it's fun to watch him kind of do some of the things that he does. And he's got podcasts and spotify's and he's doing music and he's doing videos and movies and he's doing all kinds of stuff so anyways to your point i mean we sit and talk about our kids obviously forever which is fun kind of live through them now but yeah. uh yeah. we were kids uh, way up into our late 20s and early 30s so uh, oh yeah you know, weren't we though? late 30s Where, when i look back now <laughs> i'm looking back now and being like oh my god that was 30 years ago yeah yeah 30 Nuts, years ago yeah it's nuts it's not it's smart. crazy because yeah. i'm not sure i've grown up much in the last 30 years <laughs> we're, we're not sure you've grown up much either so you know rob and i that's what the te- that's what the email said mike hasn't grown up a bit i'm like i'm just looking at it on my phone so now I'm yeah like, <laughs> at least at changed. least i've jam-packed those 30 years full of you know different wives different experiences different you know yeah. At, least about, yeah. at least we can laugh about it at least we can laugh about different it. jobs yeah yeah and we're still yeah. here yeah, yeah. You you've had different that jobs experience. i've had the same one so uh you know it's uh it's interesting but it's been it's been fun man it's been a it's been a, a treasure to kind of be involved with this sport and be able to m- move around i've coached some of the football canada teams the team canada yeah. stuff so i've been you know into the states i've been into europe i've been down into mexico and different things where we've gone on and uh, it's been a lot of fun, right, to get involved in all that stuff and get to meet people from all over the place. And guys that I coach with and coached against have moved all over the country and then fortunately been able to go back and guest coach and, you know, and now watching like O and, and watching yeah. Osh and then Kyle Walter. How cool is that? That's cool. Oh, that's right? great. Yeah. That's fantastic. Osh and I talk, you know, more than I talk to most everybody else. I mean, we stay in contact and, you know, he's uh, he's a great friend and resource and, and all that stuff. And I know you guys are pretty tight with him probably a oh, lot yeah. tighter than I am, but I mean, it's just, uh, you know, he's such a great guy and his family's phenomenal. And I went out there and stayed, he, he made me stay with them at his house when I was out there for a week. And I was, I felt like I was imposing, but they were fantastic. Yeah. And, oh yeah. I just, I, I did the blast. same thing uh, about just after we spoke, but a week later yeah. I was up in Winnipeg and went over to Ocean. It was like, it was like we were back in the locker room in 1990, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And you know, Osha's name is taboo in Hamilton, right? But when you really 
it shouldn't be because this guy is really what CFL football is all about. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at the way he coaches like that is he loves it. Yeah. It means so much to him. He is their so passionate room, about it. Yeah. Oh. Their locker room, Mike and Rob, their locker room is as close to what we used to have really as anything that I've seen. I've coached guest coach in Saskatchewan and Toronto, uh, Ottawa. I've, I've guest coached in three or four other spots. Winnipeg a few times and gone back now that OSHA's there and I've done it twice. Their locker room is as close to what we had. Really? As anything. And the wow. way Michael and that group, Richie, Richie yeah. is yeah, one Richie's of the good. best people I've ever met in my life. There's Richie a Hall. defensive. Yeah, Richie Hall. Yeah. Sorry. So Richie, and then you got Mike there, and then he's had a couple different offensive coordinator guys in there. But the people that he keeps in that group, yeah, they they yeah, good. they coach it. And the culture and the group that they have in there. It's funny if you look at it, right? You look at Willie Jefferson, right? Who's a phenomenal stud player. You're like, oh, Joe Monfort. Yep, Yep. there you go. Kalaros, Danny Mack. Yeah. Huh. Flutie. You start going down the list and guys like you guys that fit a mold here or there, like oh, Ellingson. Yeah. Yeah, Ellingson. And then you look at the 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 Walatarski and you look at those guys on the offense. And then you turn around and you look at the guys on defense and you see these stud linebackers like, oh, there's a big hill. Oh, okay. There's this guy there. And you're like, yeah, that's take all there's there's our guys. That's the guys that we had. And the relationships and what he's cultivated there. I watch it and take notes. And we talk about that stuff. We don't talk about X's and O's. No. We talk about that stuff. And oh it's crazy how how big a part that whole thing is. And, you know, we steal ideas and we share ideas. Of course. And, you know, that's kind of, you know, we went this weekend, we went paintball, took our guys, we went paintball and my entire team on Sunday. And then we Hard had a big you, roast. Eh? Yeah. Hard yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got tat. No, I didn't play, but uh, you know, you know who I played the last time I played three years ago, I played with those guys. We did paintball, Jeff Brown. You guys know oh, yeah. Jeff Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Jeff Brown's kid Mason was playing yeah. for us for a while. He played quarterback, then we moved to receiver or whatever. Okay. Didn't that little bugger tag me twice in the back? <laughs> Runs by me. I think I'm hiding. I'm kind of, you know. You can't hide. Hiding, you can't right? hide. Yeah. He comes over. Ping, ping. I'm, oh! And the boys. <laughs> that's from moving him to quarterback to receiver. That's why. Yeah, that's, that's right. No, that's it. That's right. He paid him back a few years ago because he was ineligible and didn't tell anybody. So, nice. Uh, that's oh, that's it. nice. Yeah, you got yeah, that going yeah. for you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, that's not very nice because Mace is a good kid and, and Jeff's an amazing guy. And before yeah. before we uh, tag out, we've been talking almost an hour. It's been unreal. Um, how about this million dollar question? I know you're set there. You've got a lot of, great, yeah. you know. But having said that, twenty two years, have, 22 haven't said years, that. Two thousand one, I showed up here in 01. Would, huh? would you yeah, would you consider ahead. like CFL? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure. It's, I'm it's, sure it's there's been. I'm sure there's been a lot of conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been offered a few jobs at different times uh, to to move move around and do some different stuff. It's it's something that you know it has to be you know the right scenario yeah. and and give me the right position. I mean, it, it, I was offered a position four or five years ago, and my kids just went into high school. Yeah, I can't. I'm like, well, nah. I'm not picking them up from their high school days and no. moving them. And I remember one time I got offered a job, and I won't say the city; it doesn't matter. But I got offered a job at a place one time, and I told my wife, she goes. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> We're not moving there. I went, oh, okay, sweet, sweet. So the, the town and the city is irrelevant, but uh, yeah. but it was just like, yeah, no, no, no. So, you know, it's got to be, you know, a good situation and, and the right time and the right people around. But there's, you know, if you think about, you know, the guys that are head coaches and general manager stuff that you guys know that I know, yeah. yep. you know, you have some connections now. It's funny, the guys that we play with now are G- GMs and head coaches. And yeah, the decision right? makers. Yeah, yeah decision absolutely. Makers. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's 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 who we're, you know, hanging out with and guys that we played with and grew up with and uh, know more about than they want us to know. Yeah. Well, that's for sure. Especially those two yokels at uh, Winnipeg. They're beauties. They're beauties. Uh, absolutely. Well, listen, hit And then you throw a pork chop in there. So, oh, too. Oh, Speaking of pork yeah. chop, this is where we'll finish because we could talk forever and we'll do this again, Jeff. Rob's got to go uh, get a manicure. But we, um, the, the uh, pork chops getting put up into the wall of fame inside the stadium in about I heard that. weeks, right? The I August, heard that. October, being of October. Pork chop so is what they're going to do for everyone who doesn't know pork yes, chops. For those yeah, yeah, know. sorry, yes, sorry. Yes, 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 we yes, probably yes. should have said that. Uh, we <laughs> all know who it is, and everyone else is like, who's this pork chop guy? Like, who's exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Danny Mac. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but the, my point is, we're going to, well, not we, meaning the, the team or the, uh, the tie cats are going to recreate the beer room. 
in <laughs> honor of dating back. So I figured you, you know what that was all about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a fun. Hey, time. is the game on a and Sunday? I know you're busy. Uh, I don't know. Whatever the sixth or seventh is, I, I think that's the date in my oh, head. If it, October. Of October. Yeah, if you don't have a game, yes. Jeff, maybe we get the cats to fly in for just a beer room and yeah, fly out. Yeah. We'll just say that's it now. Hysterical. Speak it into reality. Have the cats fly, Jeff. Yes. In. Have cats, cats fly. fly in. Manifest. <laughs> manifest that. Let's manifest that. Let's yeah. manifest that. Yeah. No. That's. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. I, I feel bad. The last time everybody was there would have been a couple of years ago. Yes. And as it was happening. Kyle Walters calls me and he had said to me before, Hey, are you going, you going, oh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But anyways, that was my induction. I think it was, I think it was. Yeah, it right was yeah. And, and, and reunion, yeah. you guys were all there and Kyle literally calls me from the whole thing. And he's like, buddy, you are missing this. I oh, cannot believe you're not. And he just, it just hit me. And I was like, it wasn't any fun. No, no I'm sure. I'm sure. No, no. I, I, I can believe you guys just, you know, called it a night at about 930. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like the old day. In the morning. In like the morning. Old, I didn't say <laughs> yeah. AM or PM. I just said 930. You know what I mean? So, uh, listen, listen, I we, uh, I appreciate you, go. you guys having me. Well, thank no. you for wrapping it up for us. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you were asking questions. <laughs> Thank you for taking some of us. Some of us are in the middle of training camp. I'm not sure what you guys are doing. uh, Well, listen, this is, can I say bye from the Jeff Cummins, Morielli and Hitchcock podcast for today. Yes. And we love you, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. Good luck this season. Yes. Good luck this season. We will be watching. You guys know I get sappy and all of us. I love you guys, man. I I wish I could uh, be there. Mike will tell you and and Rob knows too, man. If I could hug you guys, I would right now and, you know, that's a big uh, old bear give, hug. I'd go yeah, for that. that's right, baby. That's hug right. Karen for give, me. Hug uh, Karen for me. I was going to say, do the same thing to Michelle. Yeah. Mike, I don't know <laughs> which wife you're on now. So yeah, so don't I don't hug even, them. It may change. It may yeah, change. Don't, so I don't want to say hug it. them. Don't hug them because I'm not sure. You know, <laughs> uh, but Rob, man, give Michelle a big hug for me. Tell her I said hello, hello buddy. And, uh, and I'll do the same for Karen for sure. And Michael, even you, but wash your hands, okay? And yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Understood. Love you, buddy. Understood. Yeah. It's, hey, man, I hope you guys. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, keep keep going, Robbie, and we'll we'll be chatting. Sounds good pal nice to take care guys all right later buddy that's another episode of mori alley and hitch on the tie cats audio network have a question or a comment for them email us at mnh at tiecats.ca that's m-a-n-d-h at tiecats.ca